Top officials are panicking. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our show today, President Biden's team is in crisis mode as panic spreads among his top officials. And I want you to understand why this is so critical for the president and his team, because in order to get reelected from an economic standpoint, he needs to see the economy continue to expand. At the same time, inflation and interest rates need to come down. But the challenge right now is if the economy booms, well, that means inflation stays up and the Fed stays put. And we already know that consumers are struggling to keep up with inflation and desperately need interest rates to come down. But if we do see rates come down, well, that means inflation's coming down and the economy's going with it. And we know historically for any president seeking a second term, well, the challenge here is that the odds of getting reelected going into a recession, well, they're very low, somewhere about zero. And so as you can see, the incoming data we're gonna look at today Day does not bode well for the current administration or his officials as they scramble to find answers on how to salvage things. And here we see the U.S. lifts its quarterly borrowing above forecast to $243 billion as the government looks to take on more debt now. The Treasury Department said today that its net borrowing on Monday for April through June is now seen at $41 billion more than the previous prediction of $202 billion. U.S. debt managers reiterated their earlier estimate for the cash balance at the end of June to $750 billion. But here is the key part to this. This is the problem, is the increase was largely due to lower cash receipts. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means the economy is slowing down because when the economy is expanding and it's booming, one thing we see is tax receipts go up. So this is validating what we've seen in the recent GDP data that everyone says, well, it's just slowing down because we're heading into a soft landing. Well, the tax receipts are suggesting, well, maybe the soft landing isn't going to happen. And that's a challenge because as we're likely to see tomorrow, the Fed's going to stay on hold for a little while longer. And that means the margin for error for the economy and for the president to get reelected, at least on an economic standpoint, gets thinner and thinner. And here we can see that this was partially offset by a higher cash balance at the start of this quarter. And while this news may come as a surprise to some budget watchers, Strategists, at least as societal generality, had anticipated a reduction in the borrowing estimate to $166 billion, in part on an improvement in the fiscal deficit. So what we see is not only is spending still out of control, but tax receipts are falling. And again, it's more of an economic issue. And that's exactly why we see the market reacted the way it did. And Treasury yields briefly paired their declines on the day. They did actually fall and 10-year yields were down and the stock market market dipped, at least after the report. And why did that happen? Well, it's very simple because it's not about the amount of debt. And everyone thinks that as we take on more and more debt, rates need to rise. What you understand here, it's what the report said is that lower tax receipts mean the economy is slowing. And what the bond market started to figure out is that means future growth and inflation expectations are coming down. That means rates need to fall here. And that isn't exactly a good sign. The upward revision was somewhat surprising. Still, a $41 billion revision for the Treasury is merely a rounding error with the level of debt and deficits we're dealing with. And that's true. The market reaction indicates there's still a fair bit of sensitivity around the fiscal situation in the U.S., although this really does not change anything from a longer run perspective. And what they're trying to suggest here is that perhaps the issue is amount of debt. The real issue is it's the tax receipt. But while the Treasury is struggling here, one thing you shouldn't be struggling, and that's with your trading account. Look at this. We have a monster success rate. I pulled back all the data between March 11th. From If you took every new trade that came off our report as of close of business yesterday, actually it's meant to put 29th here, CTA Timer Pro, 78% win rate. Momentum Timer Pro, 79% win weight. What does that mean? You'd be up on all your trades. Now, what of our reports do? Well, one of them, CTA, tracks the machine positioning. This gives you some very deep value positions. Other reports don't go as far as we do in terms of the depth of the reverse and the signal. We give it to you way ahead of the machines because we want you to buy in before they start to buy and get out before they start to sell. We give you a report every day along with a video on how to do those trades. And if you're a tactical trader, well, we got some great tactical trades and even more today 
And we teach you, instead of buying in late and getting out early, we run a proprietary overlay to show you how to keep in that trade longer and be more profitable. And again, matching that with, of course, a video. Use our links in the description below and even some tips today on how to manage your 401k. It's a big asset you've got. What can you do to improve its returns? Links in the description below. You get a 30-day free trial. My buddies say you gotta pay 50% to get into their reports. No deal. We give you 30 days. We make the difference. And and the reason the market had an adverse reaction to that report was when you look at federal government tax receipts against corporate profits after tax, corporate profits being in red, what do we see here when they're both on a year over year rate change is the corporate profits have been going higher here and markets have been responding and investors by buying stocks because they believe the economy is booming. The problem is tax receipts are saying, hey, wait a second here. And you come back to say the dot com bubble, and you see tax receipts heading lower, you see profits jumped on a year year over year rate change into the green and then what happened they reverse that means of course we know the equity market came down there and you can see the relationship here with profits and tax receipts of course that means if profits are headed lower that means stocks are indeed likely to follow that's the danger part here but not to worry our reports run so many different signals you can make money in an up market down market we show you everything you need to know and later this week this tomorrow the treasury will announce a so-called quarterly refunding plan where dealers expect the department to keep the size of note and bond auction steady wednesday's announcement will come just hours ahead of the Fed's own policy statement. And what can be very interesting here is if we actually see note and bond issuance decrease with a bias toward bills. Remember, we talked about this in the show the other day, how Janet Yellen could look to force the Fed hands. How do you do that? Where you drive yields down. One way to do that, reduce issuance on the notes and bonds and push all of your issuance over into t bills. Be very interesting to see what she does now because she's got 41 billion more debt to cover and options are all hers. In fact, later this week, the Treasury will also announce its so-called court. Here we can see the Treasury's cash balance was about $908 billion as April 25th, compared with $844 billion on January 29th. But here's the big deal. The upcoming plans for a debt buyback program are not expected to significantly affect privately held net marketable borrowing as new issuance replaces securities that are bought back. Most dealers expect the Treasury to announce it on Wednesday with the exact start date for its new buyback program. So could Janet Yellen be implementing an operation twist here to reduce all the bonds that are sitting out there to drive interest rates lower? Well, it'll be interesting to see what she does because this has been in the works. We'll find out more on Wednesday. But if you look at more bad news for the economy and what we're expecting from the Fed, well, we got some on the labor market today as U.S. labor costs now rise by the most in a year in a sign of wage pressures. This is not, again, what the Fed wants to see, but employees, they desperately need their wages to go up. The Employment Cost Index, which measures wages and benefits increased 1.2 percent the most in a year after rising 0.9 at the end of last year and what we can see here stock indices fell treasury yields rose and the dollar strengthened after these figures and why is that because it means there's no chance based on that report that tomorrow the fed's going to cut in fact, what we're likely to hear is the fed say you know what we got to stay at this level for longer that is dangerous move in a big way because what we can know is unit labor costs do have a fairly strong relationship with the consumer price index here you can see unit labor costs in blue against the cpi and red both on a year over year rate change and we can note that labor costs have ticked up a little bit as inflation remains fairly sticky at the current level at least for now more likely to head lower than higher but from the fed's perspective this will keep them on ice in a big way and this is challenging for the fed this comes from robert sock and senior global economist at citigroup he notes coming at 1.2 is just evidence that the inflation data the wage growth data is moving in the wrong direction to be consistent with their target that is correct what we need to see is this decrease even further the problem then comes back again we talk about the economy here and consumers are already feeling like they're falling behind against inflation again and here what you're seeing from the officials are as well we need to bring wage growth down even more which means consumers are going to have less to spend that's going to backfeed into the economy and head us right into recession again you understand now why these top officials are in a quandary they have no good out 
And one thing we can note is labor productivity, it's slowing down as well. This against the consumer price index. And what you want to see is really strong rising productivity to really put downward pressure on the consumer price index. And what really drives productivity? Well, that's the labor market. As you can see, when companies lay people off, notably, the other employees oddly become more productive. Here we can see against continued claims now, the reason we're seeing a slowdown in wage growth, we're seeing a slowdown in labor productivity here has everything to do with the fact that we've seen fairly stable continued claims if this starts to tick higher we'll look for those unit labor costs to drop and those labor productivity data to continue to go higher and that will drive inflation down in a big way and other measures of pay gains are pointing to softer growth as the Atlanta Fed's wage growth tracker, which is a three-month moving average of median pay, is largely cool as it's peaking in 2022. And the government jobs report, that's a non-farm payroll due Friday, is forecast to show average hourly earnings step down in April from the year before. That is exactly the problem we're hearing from consumers, is that briefly, they felt like they were getting ahead. And now all of a sudden, we're seeing demand start to drop again because their wages aren't keeping up with inflation. So you see the issues here that the administration is facing. It's like they can't win either way. They're facing a lose-lose scenario. And of course, tomorrow, we're gonna hear from the Fed, but Nick Timorous, of course, we know as the Fed whisperer at the Wall Street Journal, already has the lead on what's coming as the Fed to signal the stomach to keep rates higher for longer. Well, they don't have a choice because they box himself in a corner, as Powell is likely to repeat a message delivered two weeks ago when he said recent data had clearly not given us greater confidence that inflation would continue to decline to 2%, instead indicate that it's likely to take longer than expected to achieve that. So yes, it means rates aren't going anywhere tomorrow. And the outlook, well, that hinges on inflation forecast, and the most recent data raises two possibilities. Well, let's issue with one of these. The rate outlook has nothing to do with inflation forecast because it has everything to do with two-year treasury yields. The market hasn't spoken yet here, and when the market starts driving two-year yields shown in red against federal funds rate in blue. That's what will get the Fed to cut. But Nick doing his job says, one is the Fed's expectation that inflation continues to move lower, but in an uneven and bumpy fashion, or a delayed and slower pace of rate cuts is still possible in this year. If that happens, the reality is that it's not likely because once we see two-year yields come down, and if Janet Yellen can kind of force the hand, remember, there's a big short interest in the treasury market. If she can do any anything to trigger short squeeze and get people off those positions, drive yields back down. It'll get the Fed's attention in a big way. Because Powell believes that policy is well positioned to handle the risks that we face. That is a fat chance. He said that back on the 16th of this month, if inflation continues to run somewhat stronger, the Fed will simply keep rates at their current level for longer. That's likely the expectation tomorrow. Now, here's the underlying issues. The Fed has said they could announce fairly soon their plan to slow the runoff of their $4.5 trillion in holding of Treasury securities, which are part of their $7.4 trillion asset portfolio. At issue is a program the central bank initiated two years ago to passively reduce those holdings by allowing bonds to run off its balance sheet without buying new ones. This is going back because it acquired trillions in treasuries to stabilize the markets in 2020 and provide additional stimulus in 2021. Now, what's gonna happen here is we've known this for a while. We've known the Fed is gonna to have to cut back on QE because they're only running off maturing bonds. So you think back to 2020, well, what did they issue? Well, they issued a lot of short-term notes, like two-year, three-year, five-year. Well, look at this, the two-year notes, well, some of them have rematured and still are running off because now we're in the fourth year of that. A lot of three-year notes are gone. And the issue here is they're just running out of maturing security. That means the Fed's going to have to reduce their QT. That is going to be perceived by the market as bond bullish at a time. Of course, we know Janet Yellen about to initiate perhaps an operation twist. But yet the market continues to believe that yields need to stay elevated on a supply deluge. Of course, this is the worst possible information because that is not accurate at all. It's not how the bond market works. 
because if it was a function of how much supply, interest rates would be double digits today based on the deficit and not just a deficit on the total debt. So that answer is incorrect, but the changing composition of treasury buyers could also affect the pricing of securities. Here we see foreign central banks used to be major buyer of treasuries, but their appetite has faded a reserve flatline over the past decade. And why have they faded? Because the global economy is slowing. This is what these people don't understand. Dollars move out of the US overseas, and when they get there, well, they get recycled back into the US when foreign central banks and banks buy treasury securities. And that's why we wanna see them buy them, because it means the global economy is expanding here. This is not good news. As the Fed is also looking to shrink its balance sheet, well, it has no choice, because it's running out of maturing securities, even mutual funds and hedge funds as purchasers. But what we know, if they've been wanting to buy these things, the U.S. budget deficit is likely to remain wide irrespective of the outcome of the November elections. This is probably true. Moreover, higher U.S. yields pose risk to other global bond markets as they tend to move in sync. Of course, that that means is more money flowing into the U.S. that will eventually drive yields down. The challenge, of course, the Biden administration faces here, it may be all too late by the time any of this happens. Either we're going to be in the midst of a recession by the November elections, or if the economy is indeed booming, as you can see, that means inflation and interest rates stay higher. You look at this as a potential no-win situation for the administration, which is why, as we started the show, top officials are indeed panicking as they look for answers on how to turn this around in their favor. But if everything continues as it is, well, watch out. Recession is going to be the base case, and nobody will be a winner in that. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.